So did Copa gain ground against Dr. Wright in the Satoshi Identity Trial, or did they fall back behind again? Stay tuned to the end and find out as we break down the entire day 17 of the Copa v. Wright Satoshi Identity Trial with the big all-star witness number two for Copa on the stand today with Mr. Rosenthal. Now, a couple preliminary matters. Uh, Mr. Hoff for Copa came to the stand, and he wanted to clarify. He seemed a little surprised that that – Yesterday, Dr. Wright's team, they rested on the Madden testimony. Remember, that we broke this down yesterday. They rested on the Madden testimony, meaning that they didn't bring forward that they're two experts at all. So, Hoff gets up, and they, he says, you know, to the court, we want to clarify, you know, we didn't get a chance to cross-examine Mr. Mr. Bryant and the, the experts for Dr. Wright. Uh, so we want to clarify if the court's still going to consider the joint witness statement. And he goes over to Lord Grabenu and he says, no objection from our part, Your Honor. This is, again, some unprecedented legal uh, strategy going on you know, from the right side. You know, again, we talked about it yesterday. Either A, they are just absolutely throwing the case, or B, they're so confident in the in the testimony they got from Mr. Madden, that they're willing to just, yeah, let go ahead and let the joint joint statement go in. They don't even care. So it's it's really uh, some interesting little strategies going on here on both sides. Yeah. So Rosenthal was sworn in. You know, he had a he had a inter he had a native tongue of uh, looked like could have been Eastern European. He was definitely a, a highly credible expert. It appear, appeared there was no attack to his uh, excuse me his you know credentials. He had a, an old CV from 2020, I think it was, uh, that he had supplied, that it, apparently it was enough that it satisfied the, the right legal team to where they didn't attack it and didn't object it at all. In fact, we didn't even get a chance to identify exactly what his qualifications were. So, but, but before we go into that, you know, one of the things that happened was Jonathan Hoffer Copa, he wanted to get on the record a couple things from last week's case. And this is significant for the court to, to consider. So, and, he, and Dr. Wright's legal team as well. So what, what happened was is that the, the uh, so Jonathan Off brings up s uh, the testimony from Dr. Wright where Wright was testifying that Mr. Rosenthal was not, was biased. And the exact wording was, Wright testified that Mr. Rosenthal was a BTC holder. He was going to BTC and cryptocurrency invest, uh, investor conferences. He was working with BTC Core developers, and he would lose his investment in BTC if this case went to Dr. Wright. So Hoff addresses this to him, and then all, Mr. Rosenthal denies, 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 says each one of those things are false and they're completely inaccurate. He says, I wish I had a savings in BTC. He says he didn't have it. Now, what he also says at the very end, he says, yeah, I was actually very hurt by what Dr. Wright said about me so this this allegation of his saying oh i was hurt by what dr wright said gave reason to believe that he was either when he was watching or reading the transcript from last week with dr wright how would he have known what dr wright said about him i don't think i talked about that i don't believe it maybe i did briefly could have watched one of, maybe i talked about that but you know, it seems like he was watching the case, or he was listening to it, or reading the transcript. Somebody was feeding him information, and so oh, when when uh, Wright's counsel gets up, or he failed to ask him that question as to how he knew about what Dr. Wright said about him. So that that could be uh, substantial. You know, when the witness is sitting in the courtroom watching all the testimony, uh, you know, it, he could be he could be compromised. I'm not compromised, but he could be stricken. You know, unqualified witness. All right, some of the key things that happened with Rosenthal were uh, Orr's questioning him, and Orr's got this great docile, you know, very friendly, friendly like a sly like a fox questioning that he does. And, you know, Rosenthal is a very excitable. He's extremely excitable, you could tell, because he got excited a few times on some of the questions, and, Ro and Orr was able to calm him down. One of the things he mentioned was that Rosenthal had agreed that he used uh, a different distribution than Dr. Wright in his report. So there was a nuance between how the, uh, you know, Dr. Wright said in, in a couple paragraphs in his Wright 11, he basically said that I used Windows, uh, I used Windows and Linux both to write the white paper. And then 
the the latex was going through two different distributions, Windex and Linux. And so when Rosenthal testified, he says, well, he he agreed that he didn't use the exact same distribution between Windex and Lino, Linux like, like Dr. Wright had testified to in his analysis. He said he just didn't see how that was possible. He didn't read it that way in the report. But Orr hammered on this point a few times and he, and he got him to admit that, yeah, okay, that's what it does say from Dr. Wright. He did say that he actually used two different systems. So he's like, he basically, in the transcript, he's going to say, oh, I, I wasn't quite clear what he meant by his statement there, so I only used uh, one, of the, one of the systems. I didn't check both. Yeah, so this was a major, major important point uh, for the right side for him to g a admit this because basically it's saying that the uh, – the Windows, or let's say the Linux system that Wright was using to make the, the latex files, he's using two different distribution sides. And if he hadn't, if the expert didn't test both of them, well, he's not, then, then the, the report is incomplete. It's just not, it's not complete. He has to go back and test the exact distribution the way that Wright had described it. Otherwise, how his report is, is just incomplete in his findings. Rosenthal also admitted that it is possible for Dr. Wright to customize the LaTeX system to use Times New Roman. So apparently the white paper is written in Times New Roman, and this is something that was, uh, that was highly unusual from what the or side, Dr. Wright's side saying, uh, I'm sorry, the COPA side saying it would be highly unusual to be able to do that. In fact, they said it was impossible. It was fraud, forgery. But now Rosenthal is saying, well, it would be possible to do it. It just could take... Uh, it could take a long time. It could take a month or so to do it, but it could be possibly done through customiza customization. Yeah, so, but the main point is that Rosenthal, he testified that he did not examine the white paper in the exact environment Dr. Wright alleged in Wright 11. You know, so basically, Wright, Rosenthal said that he just wasn't clear until now that, uh, that Wright had used a different environment because it was, the way it was written in Wright 11 was, it was clear, but it was kind of a, a little confusing. And so that's, it wasn't, wasn't clear to Rosenthal until Orr actually read the sentences to him, and he says, oh, I see what he meant. So on reexamination, Rosenthal then testified that it would take weeks, this is from COPA as Hoff gets up, that it would take weeks to customize the Bitcoin white paper and latex, but it could be done. And then also, then the court, uh, you know, the court asked, do, asked if Dr. Wright had written the paper in late, white paper in latex, Times New Roman, would it be, trace, would it be traceable to Dr. Wright? And then uh, Mr. Rosenthal said no. So they rested on that. I mean, this, this witness here for COPA is, is creating a lot of doubt uh, in the, I would say, in the eyes of the court on not necessarily his credibility. He's very credible. Uh, he appears very, very credible and, and honorable. I mean, I don't, he's no way lying. I mean, he's honest. But it's just a matter of he, he didn't appear to have all the correct information to do a full analysis on the two programs that Wright had brought forward, that Wright had alleged in Wright 11. So his testimony on these allegations of forgery and fraud, uh, they're just incomplete. And when there's, a, when there's a doubt on such a thing and you haven't even finished the, the forensic analysis with the proper formatting, I mean, I think it's going to be pretty clear for the court to see that. So it's going to be hard to overcome this on the Rosenthal witness for COPA. And again, this is going to go to Wright. So we had, we'd put it at uh, seven for COPA, eight for Wright. Now it's going to be seven for COPA, nine for Wright. Wright gains ground. COPA falls behind on the Satoshi Identity Trial. As we go into uh, tomorrow, is going to be day 18, and we're going to bring on Zem Gao. He's a, a guy we, I shot, you know, read some of his articles before. He's a crypto, they're calling him a cryptocurrency expert. Now, you know, he's a patent attorney. He's, uh, you know, highly experienced in blockchain I I field. So they're going to question him tomorrow. Very, very excited to hear from him. So stand by for that. There's also another cryptocurrency co expert coming in for COPA, whether that's going to be on Thursday or tomorrow. We'll see. And then Dr. Wright will return to the stand to uh, get the chance to respond to the new allegations of more forgery, more fraud, more lies, more deception uh, in the now alleged to be forged emails from his wife to the court. So, you know, it's, uh, it's getting to a point of ridiculousness in the way of the allegations of forgery and fraud. Uh, so at this point, so it's almost uh, comical. Comical on both sides. I mean, to think that somebody could actually consider doing that much wrong or, or, that every th or the other side to say that everything a, a man does is a lie. I mean, it's just, uh, 
relatively, <laughs> it's just laughable at this point. A couple of things here. I did, uh, looks like I got my, I did book a place there for the London Blockchain Conference. I'm definitely going to be going now. I got a, I got a spot all set up. Uh, and so it'll be, that'll be super looking forward to that. Also, we got a, uh, there's going to be a meetup in San Francisco next month. With, or it's not a meetup, it's a hackathon with S-Crypt and the Bitcoin guys in San Francisco. I'm definitely going to be going to that. So stay tuned for more information on that. You can follow uh, Casino Trinity on Twitter for the information on that. And, you know, we're also going to be um, interviewing Connor Murray tomorrow from the BSV Association. I have one also planned with another guy. He's got a really cool game on the, in the space. He's been doing a lot of spaces uh, uh, as well. And then I'll be in Phoenix on uh, starting on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. So I'm going to be in Phoenix, Scottsdale, really Phoenix area for uh, – the next five, four or five days. So I think I'm going to meet up with a couple guys down there and see what's going on. And so it'll be a uh, fun to recap on everything and, uh, you know, looking forward to it. So, all right, be sure to subscribe, like the video, make, make a comment, share this. So people get an update of actually what's going on with this court case and the significance on it. And just to recap today goes to Dr. Wright, the Rosenthal big second all-star witness for Copa. He didn't fumble or anything. He didn't drop the ball. It wasn't that he was, you know, he, he didn't at all. He's a great witness for Copa. He just was, it just, he just didn't quite make the mark by doing the complete analysis. And that's, that came out in testimony. So his analysis was incomplete. The information that he was provided, you know, he didn't complete his analysis. So he'd have to go back and do a second analysis or another report. And it may be too late for that. Uh, so definitely goes to right today as right gains ground in the Satoshi identity trial. I'll see everyone at the top.